get a new title in your name and pay the fees for that. Mm. And then you can sell it to someone else. Nice. Usually they're dealer reassignments. Dealers are allowed to transfer it from one dealer to another until it sells to a private person. Oh. But like I said, California doesn't have all that on the back like a lot of other states do. So until I see something that shows me that this guy has released interest. Now, he might be able to go to California and request a vehicle title reassignment form. Okay. Which is what a dealership would use. I don't know if they'll give him one because it's what a dealership would use to transfer that title on. Okay. If he can get that and then sign that over to you, fine. But now you're trying to sell it to someone else, your brother. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so who's actually exporting this vehicle? My brother is. He's the one that uh, sent in the paperwork stuff. Then so. you're going to have to then sell the title, sell the vehicle, and transfer the title to him. Because um, the person exporting it has to own the vehicle to be allowed to export it out of the country. Yeah, okay. This is way more complicated than in Canada. Ah, bad news. If it's not one thing, it's another. Okay, so the bad news is that even though... Okay. The bad news is that my paperwork at the border was rejected. So I can't bring the truck... Canada as it stands uh, how it works in Canada when you buy a vehicle all you have to do is sign a bill of sale both parties sign the bill of sale and you're good to go here you have like transfer the title and since I'm not keeping it here in the US I didn't know that I would still have to do that but apparently I do have to do that but the guy who we bought the truck from is five hours away and there's a whole headache and we have to we have to figure that out now while we're waiting for multiple callbacks let me just show you this huge cavernous space under here with the transfer case and transmission missing it was so much easier to work on the headers and stuff under here while being able to sit where the transmission normally sits but now it's time to put it all back up because I need this thing to be ready to roll because if this paperwork goes through today I in theory can leave tomorrow or the next day I, I mean I don't know let me show you real quick what it looks like with everything put back together we got the transfer case here right there and then we got the transmission right there that's hard to harder than you'd think to point at things when you're looking at a screen but anyways you see how much little how much less room there is to work on things on the front end I'm so glad that was ugh, out Although, the reason why it was out is kind of crappy and also expensive. But hopefully from here on out, it goes smoothly. It'll be worth it. There we go. Finally guys, they accepted my paperwork. Took forever, cause uh, so much hurdles to go there. It's way easier to do this in Canada. There's, there's no titles in Canada. It's just bill of sale, sign it, bring it, insure it, and you're on your way. Here it's, I don't know, it's probably even more complicated cause I'm importing it, but I'm finally able to. They said, yes, you can leave in two days. So that's, that's, that's where we're at. Now, a bummer here is uh, I still haven't been able to drive my truck in the whole time I've been here. I've planned to be here for two weeks, and it's been almost a month, and I haven't been able to drive it at all. It sucks. I was going to drive it today, but... There's parking issues. Everything here is meant for small cars and medium cars, not huge ass trucks. Anyways, we're at the car museum because we've been thinking about cars the whole time we've been here. Dalton is a huge fan of cars, and so am I. And he hasn't been to the car museum just yet. He just moved here. So, why the heck not? And by the way, this was from, if you guys watched mine and Dakota's show, Just Joshing with Dakota. It's called Just Joshing with Dakota, and that name came from the same lady who baked me this banana bread and I'm eating the last bite here. Freaking delicious, so thank you for that. I really appreciate that. Anyways.
these types of cars right here is what I really love in custom cars. It's the personal touches. Like here, there's airbrushing on the visor, airbrushing on the firewall. The uh, valve covers are engraved. The lights here are engraved. There's lace airbrush there. There's gold fleck or well metal fleck in the in the paint job, pin striping, more airbrush on the back, custom uh, emblems and stuff. That's the kind of stuff I love in a car, and uh, that's kind of like why I draw on my one truck. I'm not gonna draw on my new truck, but on my other truck, I sharpied all over it because it's just it's personal touch, and I, I love that. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with my new truck. I I'm not gonna draw on it, but I'm gonna do some stuff to personalize it. Probably not to this level because this is many dollar signs that I don't have uh, laying around, but I just, I love this kind of stuff. I do have an airbrush now though, thanks to one of you, appreciate that. You can check out uh, the fan mail opening videos if you want to see that, but maybe I'll do something with that. Super cool. Another great one. I kind of like how it's kind of like looks kind of scratched up and stuff. It's not scratched up. It's kind of hard to explain what I'm actually seeing here, but just the way that the paint job is, it's just, it's it's different, and I love that. I love a personal touch in custom vehicles. So cool. Oh, some fast and, wait, too fast, too furious, right? This is Yuki's car or Suki? What's her name? Suki's car. I love the Fast and Furious movies, even though they're so corny and ridiculous. I just, I don't know, that's kind of cool. But yeah, now that I have a, uh, ooh, that's sick too, is that bare metal? That's so cool. Now that I have an airbrush, I might, oh, Lincoln Continental. Okay, now that I have the airbrush, I may do some stuff with the airbrush on one or two or three of my vehicles. I have three vehicles now, and then Ashley, so I got four. But the airbrush, I got to learn how to do it, but I might get into doing that. This is my favorite part of the museum so far is, is this. And I love this car. I, I really want one of these. I want Dakota to get one of these actually. And uh, it's cause uh, like it has the suicide doors nice and all murdered out like that. It looks so nice. But imagine him having his logo right here. You know the logo that he has of the, of the Jack? I think that would be sweet. Would also work with a Cadillac. Actually it might work better with a Cadillac, but these Lincolns are way nicer than than the Cadillac counterpart, in my opinion, just because of the way that the doors open up and the way that it sits. So I didn't realize it until Dalton just pointed it out, even though he's all over the walls here. These cars belong to James Hatfield of Metallica, and uh, yeah, definitely has some cool cars. Uh, we did notice, though, on this Continental that these exhaust pipes are fake, which is kind of a bummer. The, the real exhaust actually comes out comes out the back right here still a cool car I really like it I love how the paint job is not perfect I love how it's got like this kind of two-tone thing going on where it's all like metal fleck up here on the top and it's got like almost a primer look here super sick ka -chow! I didn't know that they made an actual Lightning McQueen car. It looks cartoony and everything. That's freaking awesome. I wonder if it drives. You can't see through the windows, but I wonder if it drives. That's pretty freaking cool. It does not drive. It is plywood underneath, but it still looks cool. Dalton has this thing where uh, if he sees a car that looks like this, like it looks odd, he's like, oh, Disney car. Yes. Same with uh, this one over here. Oh yeah, another Disney car. They're so weird. And by the way, Dalton knows like every freaking car. He doesn't know necessarily everything about every car, but he's like, oh yeah, that's uh, a blah, 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 blah. Oh yeah, that's actually the first such and such that came out with blah, blah, blah. Oh, that was actually the first indie car to ever blah, blah, blah. He's very uh, into cars. And he knows a lot about car stuff. He's not like a mechanic, although I'm sure you would be a good one if you decided to go that route, but just the things that he knows where he's like, oh yeah, that's actually the Vernon Nat. And I'm like, oh, check out this car. And he's like, oh yeah, that's the Chevy blah, blah, blah. They actually only made those in Australia and only for one year and only because uh, they ran out of toothpicks. He just knows weird facts.
So when I was a kid, there was uh, Knight Rider reruns on TV that I used to watch, and I thought this was one of the coolest cars that you could get. Back when I first got my Mustang, I was actually thinking about getting a car just like this, but white. I ended up getting the Mustang because ultimately we're kind of a Ford family, uh, and I really like the Fox Body Mustangs, and that's what I got. I just loved on the front of uh, these magazines that my brother Ken would get called Fast Fords and Muscle Mustangs or something like that. There would always be a Fox Body with the nose up in the air off the launch, and when I was a kid, I thought they just did that but they don't. I've never saw a Chevy do that though on one of those magazines, so Fox Body won me out. Got the Batmobile and the Batmobile. Kind of neat. This one's actually Dalton's favorite. Yes. And the Joker Mobile. And over here they have the Bat motorcycle. It'd be cool if they had all the Batmobiles here. And don't forget there's also this Bat motorcycle thing too. And of course the Lego version. Can't forget that. I'm a fan of VW buses. I wish, uh, I wish I could get one. In a little better shape than this one, but I wish I could get one. There's a nicer one. I'm even kind of a fan of the new ones. They're kind of neat too. This thing right here looks like someone told a child to draw a Hummer. <laughs> and here's a couch you can drive. I don't know if you guys have seen League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, but this motorcycle looks like the machine guns that the bad guys have in that movie. This is a, a room full of like sculptural vehicles, and they're kind of cool. They're functional, but they're uh, they're not very practical. Like, look at this thing. How do you drive that? So odd. And this thing. These are the shoes that you have to wear with it. <laughs> Got some movie cars out here as well. Check out these welds. They're actually made out of silicone or something like that. They probably do that so that it shows up on camera and it looks more rough and tough and badass. But all like the scratches and stuff and the paint are actually fake. It's just sponged on and dry brushed on so that it looks like it's scratched up. And the, the metal, like the big, huge, strong bumpers, they feel like they're made out of like, uh, like a, either a, like a light aluminum or like a, like a fiberglass or something like that. They're actually pretty fragile. But it still looks cool on camera, which is the whole point. They, it looks pretty, not bad, but, but not good in real life. It just doesn't look real. The rust doesn't look real. The scratches don't look real, and like the welds definitely don't look real. Like even, just look at that. Like, that's clearly some sort of silicone. But, if it looks good on camera, doesn't matter. However, some of the movie cars do have real damage and stuff, like these Mad Max cars. So, that's cool that they went through the actual trouble of doing real damage to them, real patina and stuff, because it just looks way better up close. I mean, the stuff that's painted on does the job for on screen, but it's way cooler when you're up close to it and you can see what you saw in the movie, but for real. You know what I mean? Pretty cool. I actually never seen Mad Max, but I like the cars. And that's probably because I really like rat rods. There's a lot of rat rods in that movie. I would actually like to build a rat rod one day because I think they're so dope. They're probably my favorite. Hey man. Uh, rat rods are probably my favorite, um, uh, what is it called? Scene? Scene. My favorite scene in car culture. Rat rods are like, uh, you know, you can customize them with just about anything. They're crunchy, got nice patina on a lot of them. I mean, everyone's individual and different, but I just, I just love them. And I would like to do that one day. And, uh, I mean, I can't afford it now, but down the road, I would love to do something like that. Anyways, Mad Max is kind of reminding me of that. Um, kind of a dirty uh, way of 
of doing up a car, but still awesome. Similar to getting pizza from 7-Eleven. Kind of, uh, <laughs> kind of not the, the, you know, it's not gourmet, but for some reason, I just love it. So that's what we're having for supper today. Yeah, it's not bad. He's right, you know, it's good. I don't know why. It seems like it wouldn't be good because it's freaking 7-Eleven, but it is good. To my truck it's my last day here in LA so I have to clean it out get it loaded up with all the stuff we're taking back to Canada yeah I'm gonna miss this place even though I didn't mean to stay here this long it's a very inspiring spot <laughs> dude I need you to pull up you have to park really close to the curb here which makes sense but it makes it so if you have a car you can't open the door but if you have a truck, no problemo, because, well, especially in this truck, it's way higher than all the curbs, so that's good. But as I was saying, uh, I'm gonna miss LA. LA is a very inspiring place. I mean, I guess that's why everyone, well, not everyone, but a lot of people who are artists of varying uh, persuasions all move here. I mean, this is where movies and TV shows are filmed, so, I mean, that's art, right? Actors move here, visual artists move here, singers move here. It's just the right place to be. I'm not gonna move here because I like the country, but it is inspiring. Like I'm staying like right close to the Disney Animation Studios. It's pretty inspiring. And uh, I mean, I'm inspired by 
more than just other art. I mean, even just the garbage throwing out that pizza box. I wasn't able to create too much art while here, so it was pretty dope to be able to just do that on a whim based off of two things unrelated that both inspired me. You know, that's pretty, ooh. Man, there's so many of these, there's so many of these lizards around. They're so cool. I have kind of a funny lizard story. So on the way here from Dalton's house to my brother Ken's house, there's a, uh, let's call it a mountain, this, this big hill. And driving by it, I was like, wait a minute, is that a lizard? Now this hill is huge, which is why I call it a mountain. So I was like, there's no way that I'd be able to see this freaking lizard from this distance. Cause we're like, we're on the highway and I can see it up there. So I'm like, let's turn around. So Dalton turns around and we go back and we're both agree, yeah, that's a freaking lizard. And then when we get there, ah, how frustrating is that? It's not even real. That's cool though. Freaking wicked wicker lizards. Who who does that? Someone just like staked it to the side of the mountain, which is, I mean, whatever. Anyways, now I gotta clean out my truck. I got, this lock's still a little sticky sometimes. So, kind of annoying, there we go. Gotta clean out all the junk and tools all of the stuff out of the box so that we can fit these tires in here. These tires were so frustrating to get. Hopefully they're not so frustrating to get in here. Like there was this one tire in particular. Trying to get that tire right there. We got everything basically cleaned up except for what's left in the bed back there we just uh, so on the days that we were waiting for all this paperwork to come through we did a little more work on the truck uh, replaced the steering stabilizer and stuff I'm gonna keep the old stuff because I might be able to make some art out of it so the hardware and the shocks themselves I'm gonna keep or whatever they're called dampeners whatever now this is distilled water and you might be wondering why do I have so much distilled water well, that's because Ken and I bought the entire grocery store out of all their distilled water. Now you might be thinking that's a little bit ridiculous. What the heck do you need so much distilled water for? Distilled water doesn't have any minerals in it and we needed to do a coolant flush. Now we brought the truck to a place to get the coolant flush because it's a pain in the ass to do a coolant flush because it's hard to dispose of the uh, the old coolant because not very many places take it and you don't really want to just dump it on the street because you know environmental uh, 
consciousness, right? So what we uh, what we ended up doing is at first we took it to a place to get it done and they had a weird system of doing it. Basically, we brought it there brown and the reason why it was brown instead of green, which it should be, is because whoever owned this truck before me, absolute tool, he filled it with tap water. Tap water has minerals in it, which causes rust. And rust turns <laughs> green coolant brown. So he mixed it with, uh, with, with water. Here, in a warmer climate, people figure uh, water will be just fine. And in theory it is, but really you wanna have that antifreeze in there. Now where I'm going, I definitely need antifreeze because if I don't, it'll freeze and then my frost plugs will go out the engine and I will have a big problem. So, what we ended up doing is bringing it to a place to get the flush done, because it's way easier for them to do it and it doesn't actually cost that much. But what they ended up doing is just mixing new stuff with old stuff. Their flush system sucks. Basically, they have one hose uh, where they should have two. How, how it should work is you hook one hose up to the top, cycles down through the engine and out through the bottom, so you get rid of everything. We even, uh, while well, we're waiting for this paperwork stuff too, we uh, decided to take out the heater core to make uh, the process of flushing it easier because sediment and stuff gets stuck in the heater core. We basically replaced that because we didn't want the old crap in there to cycle through the new stuff. Anyways, we made it as easy as possible and it still was absolute garbage and that's just because of the process they use. They basically put it in through the top and then sucked it out through the top. So you, essentially they were just mixing new stuff with old stuff. Now. We have this tool here, and uh, shops like that that do this service, they have a better one. It's it's like you kind of like, you look through it. It's kind of a, a weird uh, device. But anyways, this is a, a simpler one. You see that red arrow in there, that red little piece there? That's a float, and it measures the glycol in the, in the coolant. And here, it tells you how cold you can get. Now, we had it at about minus 22. You can see right here says minus 22 and that's not good enough for where I live and uh, it was due for a change we need it to be at minus 45 or better which is what it is at now when we brought it to them it made it worse it made it so it was only good to minus 16 Celsius I'm talking and so we brought it back there and we're like hey uh, I don't know how this is possible but it's worse than it was and it's brown still and they were like huh that's weird it's weird to me that they didn't even notice that. So, anyways, we decided, hey, don't worry about it. We're gonna do it ourselves. So, what we did is we flushed the entire system with water, and you want to use distilled water because you don't want the tap water that has the minerals in it to stay in there. So you basically flush it out with this stuff, and then you mix it with 100. So. Typically you have 50-50 in your vehicle, 50-50 uh, mix coolant. We put in straight 100 to mix with this once we had all the brown flushed out. And maybe I should uh, explain real quick um, why we're, we did a flush to begin with, besides it being brown. The reason why we noticed it was brown was because we saw it, and the reason why we saw it is because we got a new radiator. Do you remember last vlog where uh, we cooked the, <laughs> the torque converter? I'm so glad that's not going to be an issue now. We got a brand new transmission, brand new, another brand new torque converter. It's going to be, it's going to be good. Anyways, we cooked it because the the uh, cooler, the transmission cooler in the radiator was clogged from years of sediment and stuff, and it basically just failed. Somehow we miraculously were able to drive 800 miles on that, but that's not typical. Usually when it clogs up you can't uh, cycle the coolant and then the uh, basically the uh, torque converter can't stop spinning, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, we needed to get a new radiator. So getting a new radiator, may as well get a, a coolant flush because it's, you may as well, it's just good maintenance. Anyways, that 
is why I have all the extra water. We can return this. We used a whole bunch, but we didn't use it all. So now other people can buy some distilled water. Does anyone actually know what distilled water is for? I don't, I don't, I don't actually know that. I know that we used it for this, but you don't want to drink it because it's just going to take all the minerals out of your body and then you will die if you do it long enough. I don't know. I've always wondered that. I should uh, actually just correct myself real quick. The coolant doesn't cycle through the transmission cooler. That's transmission oil or transmission fluid, if you will. But how it works is right here is a transmission line and on the bottom area, there's another one. And we also have an external cooler right here. This one did not fail. I don't know uh, how the how it works in sequence, but that one was still good, which is how we made it home. We basically just bypassed this one here to, to use this one here, and then we were able to drive home. Somehow the torque converter didn't fail, which is amazing. That's just a really good torque converter. It's like a billet clutch, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. It's supposed to be a bulletproof thing, and I guess it was. I mean, we replaced it with one that, that didn't turn bronze yet, so there is that. But anyways, I just wanted to just be clear on that. I'm not a mechanic. I don't, I don't, I don't know a lot, but I know some, and I'm trying to learn. And by learning, or by t talking about it, I, I, I retain. I retain it. I can't really do that with the English language for some reason, but when it comes to hands-on, working with tools, working with mechanical stuff, working with doing woodworking, welding, all that kind of stuff, I mean, I'm not good at any of it, but I'm, I'm decent at some of it. You know what I mean? Anyways, I'm waiting for Ken to get home so that we can load up these tires. So just figuring out how we're going to fit everything in the truck is uh, like no amount of Tetris is gonna make everything fit. So, <laughs> so we're, we're actually gonna get a trailer. Now the trailer place is 39 minutes away. 36. 36 and it closes in 39 minutes. 36 right? now. <laughs> oh dang it, we're gonna get there just as it closes. But we were just on the horn with them so hopefully, hopefully we make it. Because I'm leaving in the morning so we need to get all this stuff done today, tonight. Yes. Oh, so you wanted the, uh, the phone number for the U-Haul Rosemead? Uh, the address, actually. Oh, the address, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, 4251 okay. North Rosemead Boulevard, Rosemead, California. Okay. 91770. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah good luck. Thank you. I didn't know that you were still on the phone with them. Yeah, that was not actually the location, so now I gotta call the actual location. Oh. And, uh. Shoot. Okay. 4251, that's them, yep. So here we go. Yeah, I don't have anything available because, uh, one way. The one I have is actually on a rental right now. Oh, crap. Well, so much for that idea, I guess. Yeah, Joe, apologies about that. Hello? So yeah, I think that that trailer will be fine. Um, it's got a it's got a, a floor in it everywhere, right? Like it's uh, you know, it's not like yeah, it's all sides. It's just the top. Uh, some front ends are lowered and the top back end, but that's the only weird thing about it. Oh, I see. Okay, I think that should be fine. Um, now, if I get there at like 7:03, is that okay? Because I know you guys close at seven. Yeah, as long as you get right, seven, you should be fine. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to get there just like a few minutes after 7. Yeah, as long as you get break, maybe like the first like 10 minutes after 7, you should be fine. Yeah. If not, then you should get the guys to leave, and then because if they close the store, then I wouldn't be able to help you. Right, okay. Because, yeah, my current yeah. time looks like 7 or 3, I'd be, I'd be getting there. Me. Come on. 
They said they would stay open for us, but uh, doesn't look like it. And then I will send you the rest of the information that you need. Okay, so the trailer is available for rent then? There is one at that location, that's what it's showing me. Yeah, so they just lied to me about it having been uh, rented for tomorrow. And you heard that, I was told, right? Did you hear that conversation when they came out of the store? I did hear that. I included it in the filing. Yep. I sent to the general manager. Yep. Lied to my face. Crazy. Okay. 7am. Schedule now. I said it's for tomorrow the 5th at 7am. Alright, you should have all the information you need for the reservation and then um, I just sent that show up in your system as unavailable, right? Um, only if that person was having it back before 7 a.m. Well, that's not even possible. They're not open until 7 a.m. Trailers can be picked up. They have to be picked up during business hours, but they can be brought back during um, after hours. Right, but the trailer is still currently here. I mean, let me go look for it. Let's do that. Let's go find this thing. So normally we're not So normally we're not ones to complain, but these people specifically said they would stay open for us a few minutes later so that we could get the trailer. And we were explicit about asking about that, confirming, are you sure? And he said, "Don't worry about it, it should be fine." And now they didn't allow us to hit pick up this trailer, this trailer right here. And then they said, just now they made an excuse saying that it's not available because someone reserved it. But if they would have reserved it, it wouldn't be available for us to pick up tomorrow, which we are doing on the phone right now. So if this was reserved, we would not be able to come get it at 7 a.m., which we're gonna do tomorrow now that we can't pick it up now. And th this, is LA traffic sucks we wasted it's we've been it, like I said normally we don't complain about things like this but they specifically said they would stay open for us so that we could get the trailer and then they said that they couldn't even give us the trailer when they finally did talk to us because someone reserved it but no one did reserve it because we just reserved it now through their customer service line I know this is probably seems like not a big deal, but it is because I've already been here for two weeks longer than I had meant to and I wanted to leave early tomorrow morning and now we have to do all this. Can't even get the... Ugh. Well, at least we're not the only ones with bad luck.
something like that, but I should probably learn how to play it first. I actually didn't think it was that bad. I, I mean, it would be like me asking you to sing it. You think it was that bad? Yes, yes, I do, and I think you should try something. Dude, I didn't think it was that bad. I mean, I definitely can't sing, so I, I get the sentiment. I know what you're saying, but I didn't, I didn't actually think it was that bad. I mean, I could try. I'll just get creative with it. All right, thanks, dude. Yep.